bonus when we bought the farm or the homestead or whatever term you want to use is sort of this 10 acres of semi-established native woodland that hasn't been touched in well since the day it was planted really you'll see that around the bottom of each tree is the little planting piece that you put in to protect it when it's a sapling so for us it's a real opportunity to do something amazing and give it a real opportunity to, to flourish so I feel really lucky to have it as part of the homestead. What I'd like to do is give some context to the situation we're in now. Show you where we are at this minute with the homestead. What does the homestead consist of in terms of land and buildings and how we're using those at the moment, but more importantly, what are our plans moving forward to try and achieve those goals of, of being self-sufficient? We have managed to, at the moment, do this debt-free. So that's our first goal. Now, whether we can maintain that's another matter because as we found out when we first got here, things change, you have unexpected costs. So at the moment, it's debt-free, mortgage-free. We're not at the moment producing enough food, or any food particularly, um, so that we don't have to go to a grocery store. We are off grid, so we've not had any utility bills, we don't have any water bills, any electricity bills, but we have been buying gas for the caravan. Really, we're in a, the very early stages of moving towards our understanding for ourselves, what is off grid living. This, this was a bonus, an unexpected bonus. We thought there's nothing we could do with it. But when we'd got on the land, we realized that the walls were all solid. They just looked terrible. So we repointed them. The roof structurally was great. Just the tin was a bit bad. So we've sorted that out. In Scotland, they're called a button Ben house, which is basically two rooms with an entrance. One they call the outer room, one they call the inner room. The outer room is always the kitchen, and then the inner room is the bedroom, and we've kept it exactly the same. I mean, it's tiny, it's truly a tiny house, but wow, it's gonna be great. On top of that, we have what's called a buyer or a barn. It doesn't connect to the house, it's a solid wall between the two, and it's where you used to keep your animals and other farm implements. We've kept it that way and it will be used for looking after our poorly animals, making woolly hats, generally doing stuff that needs to be done when you want a bit of shelter. We want to keep the history of the site. We noticed that one of the stones had the date in which the, the building was sort of, I suppose, finished in 1862. Uh, they even put their initials on there. We just want to carry on the history of the building. What I'm going to do as well is show you some of the other things that we've done where we planted three or four thousand trees and an orchard. So I'm going to head over there now. We're really keen to diversify our little homestead and be as self-sufficient as possible. And one of our ideas for that was planting a fruit orchard. These are apples, pears, and plums. Um, we've never done it before, so again, we've never done it before. So it's all a learning curve for us, but it's a good step in the right direction because this tree gave us an apple in its first year. Unbelievable. Um, as well as planting trees for food, we think it's a good idea to plant trees for cover for the animals, also to encourage wildlife back onto the land. Because although it's not been used for 30 years, the fields are still very bare and sort of monocrop grass. Our goal is to create meadows, hedgerows, more forest, make it a place for both us and nature, the things around us, encourage birds back onto the land, 
other wild animals and yeah, make it a home for everyone because that'll sustain us as well. Really looking forward to see how that progresses over the next few years. We've already planted about 3,000 trees. You can't really see them, so <laughs> it's not particularly interesting because they're about this big and you know, swamped by grass. But as they grow, we'll show the progress of what, you know, how that looks. Yeah, that is part of our homestead philosophy. We've put our um, off-grid power in a container. Now you can't just throw it into a container because they sweat and it gets wet. Lithium-ion batteries with wet equals big fires that don't go out. So we had those that container um, insulated with some spray foam, which isn't you know the best thing to do in, in terms of you know for the planet and all that sort of stuff. But you don't have an option. There's not a lot you can do. Um, so so that's worked really well and it's kept them warm because again batteries don't like the cold too much and helped uh, install and, and, and keep things working properly. These are the business end of our power. There are solar panels, they connect directly into the big red box that we were talking about earlier on and yeah they keep us in electricity. Uh, we've got about 30,000 watts of storage. These generate about 400 watts each, 450 um, in the sun. It means by 10 o'clock most days we are fully charged on our batteries, which is great. Also, when you're using off-grid power, you have to think about things in a very different way. We use all of our heavy electrical items during the day when the sun's up because it replenishes the batteries really quickly. And then at night, we are more frugal unless the wind is blowing and we have a wind turbine up there that we can show you. So these are an unexpected addition, aren't they, to the homestead. This is Manny. We uh, had our hands full with our original flock and we thought that would be it. I mean, they're the reason we moved here. And it seems when people find out you take on orphan, lambs you end up with more orphan lambs and actually it's been amazing it was hard work we actually had to bring them up in the static caravan but as you can see they've turned out all right and it's lovely having them here i feel really lucky because they're all so different manny <laughs> he loves a bit of attention this this is Winnie, she's quite soft. And that's Minnie, who is Yvonne's sidekick. Um, follows her around as if she, well, if he, as if he was a dog. He even walks to heel. So yeah, it's been hard work on top of building a house, sorting out all the other stuff, but absolutely really worth it. How could you say no? So you've now met and seen everything we've been up to since we moved here. And I look forward to showing you in more detail all of those little bits. <laughs> and you'll see these guys grow up as well because they grow pretty quickly, don't you?
<laughs> so welcome to our tiny homestead. So you've seen and met everyone on the homestead. If you've enjoyed it, it'd be amazing if you could subscribe, really help us out and these guys. Feel free to hit the like button and the bell. If you've got any questions or have any thoughts, please put it down below. We'll do everything we can to answer them. It's always great to hear from you. Welcome to our tiny homestead. <laughs>